It's the most precious commodity we have. And our health care system. Our lifeline to a healthy life. It saves lives. And that's really important as we look at what the services we're providing. Studies show rural Americans are at greater risk of death from heart disease, cancer, respiratory disease, and stroke. A main reason cited, access to health care and costs. What can I do with that frustration? I mean, I just have to go with it because this is what options we have for health care here. It's been six years since Ballot Health obtained a monopoly on the hospitals in our region. Tonight, News 5 begins a week-long examination of health care in the Appalachian Islands. And what's changed since the merger that created Ballot Health? CYB. This is News 5 at 6. A recent study by the Health Resources and Services Administration for people who live in rural areas citing restricted access to quality health care as one of their top concerns. Tonight we take an in-depth look at health care in our region since the creation of Ballot Health six years ago. We are digging deeper into how we got here, how Ballot is aiming to provide better health care to rural areas, as well as the need for more access to mental health and dental care in the region. We begin with News 5 anchor Kristen Kwan. In 2018, our two health systems, Wellmont Health System and Mountain States Health Alliance, made a deal. They announced they would become one. This new merger would create the nation's largest monopoly. Despite the Federal Trade Commission's disapproval, the health system took a leap of faith and created Ballot Health. Now, six years later, we're looking back on how we got here and where we are now. Here in Virginia and Northeast Tennessee, if these mountains could talk, they'd tell the stories of strong values, hard work, and perseverance. In an area that has nearly 960,000 people, there are also serious health issues that plague the region. The people of Appalachia face health problems like obesity, diabetes, substance abuse, and mental health issues. And if you need a hospital, you have one option, Ballot Health. Overall, how do you feel about the health care in our region? Our health care has declined greatly. I think that it is extremely lacking. I have had good, you know, experiences with health care in the Tri-Cities, but I have had bad experiences as well. Health is the largest regional health care monopoly in the country, serving 29 counties in Northeast Tennessee, Southwest Virginia, Northwest North Carolina, and Southeast Kentucky. The hospital monopoly was formed in 2018 when Mountain States Health Alliance and Wellmont Health System agreed to merge through the issuance of a certificate of public advantage, otherwise known as COPA. But that agreement didn't sit well with many. In fact, a group in Kingsport spent 257 days camped outside of Holston Valley Medical Center in Kingsport, protesting the decision. Notably, the decision to downgrade Holston Valley Medical Center from a level one to a level three and move their NICU to Johnson City. If the plan that Ballot has in, in place to eliminate this NICU here, uh, if it were in, in effect at the time of my granddaughter, I don't think she would have survived the transport from here to Johnson City. If they can't get the care they need and get the equipment they need, which is not going to be provided in an ambulance with the downgrade of this facility to make it up there, their lives would be at risk. Despite protesters' efforts, the merger moved forward. I would recommend that you get interested in your health care. I would recommend that you get interested in your local politics and what's happening in your region because it matters. Those who supported the move, like President and CEO of Ballot Health, Alan Levine, say the merger was needed to improve health care costs, quality, accessibility, and overall population health. Wellmont at the time was actually on the market to be sold. They were they were actually going to partner with an out of out of region system, and so an entire all of Sullivan County and a lot of Southwest Virginia. They would have lost local control of their hospitals. It would, the decisions would be getting made by somewhere in, in Charlotte or Nashville or somewhere else. 
And the, and the people that lived here didn't want that to happen, and the business community didn't want that to happen. The COPA agreement didn't come without conditions, though. Ballot Health agreed to increased oversight by the state and a long list of requirements, like limiting price increases, maintaining quality, and providing charitable donations. They also said they would invest $308 million over 10 years to improve the health in the region, some of which has been spent on expanding addiction treatment programs. If you read the COPA statute in law in both Tennessee and Virginia, it actually says they want us to reduce unnecessary duplication. So think expensive programs like trauma, level three neonatal ICU, um, wherever there's duplication that's costly that doesn't add value for patient care, um, by, by eliminating that cost and moving those dollars into things that actually would improve the quality of life for people that weren't currently offered, that was very attractive. This is just our first story, examining ballot health since the merger. This is a five-part series that continues tomorrow. Tomorrow's report features more on why ballot health decided to make decisions to consolidate and cut services. Thank you, Kristen. We want to know what you think of health care in the region. You can chime in by scanning this QR code that you see on your screen. Your feedback might be used as part of our continuing coverage. I like to think of it in a very simplistic way, we save lives. Access to health care is one of the biggest concerns in rural communities. We learn what Ballad says about their efforts to provide that access. Plus, providing addiction services in our area, look at one group's approach when we come back. Leave you asking, how do they do that? According to the Health Resources and Services Administration, every county in our viewing area is what it considers a health care provider shortage area for primary care, as highlighted in this map right here from Rural Hub. These are the counties in dark blue that we're talking about. Ballon Health agrees, saying when it comes to rural health care, access is critical. In August of 2023, Lonesome Pine Hospital in Wise County celebrated 50 years of service. As News 5's Ashley Hope tells us, Lonesome Pine Hospital is now planning for growth to continue providing those needed services. We are small, but we are still doing really good quality work. Our mission at Ballot is to honor those we serve by delivering the best possible care. I believe we're doing that in Southwest Virginia every single day. That's the message from leaders at Lonesome Pine Hospital in Big Stone Gap, who stress the critical role the site plays in emergency and inpatient care. I think we're an access point for rural health care here, and um, I like to think of it in a very simplistic way. We save lives. Lonesome Pine Hospital is made up of 71 beds, including 60 inpatient beds and 11 emergency department beds with the emergency department utilizing innovative technology provided by Ballad. We rely on telehealth services to consult with specialties over in the Tri-Cities. We're able to um, reach out to the trauma network, the Niswanger Children's Network, teleneurology services, telemedication history, teletriage to help support our local team here. We're actually investing in the hospital right now. We have a $10 million renovation uh, going on here at the hospital. We just renovated our emergency department to make it more modern uh, and to make it more accessible for our patients. Uh, we also are spending uh, some of those dollars to basically renovate the entire uh, hospital to bring out patient services here and provide more services on campus. Leaders saying by creating Ballot, it's been able to generate savings and then reinvest those savings to preserve access to care in rural areas. We're very lucky, and I know the COPA uh, has helped Ballot come together and be able to continue to provide these services in a sustainable way. Um, it saves lives. And that's really important as we look at what the services we're providing. We're also trying to help improve the health of our community. Uh, and that takes a lot of resources, a lot of time. Personnel adding they are excited for what is to come. I'm really proud of what we're doing here in Southwest Virginia. I think uh, we have a great team of people. We're taking care of our families. We're taking care of our community. And uh, we're very proud of what we're doing. Reporting in Big Stone Gap, Virginia, Ashley Hope News 5, WCYB. If we weren't here, who would take that on? The need for mental health care in our area is growing. But what about the resources? Find out what we've uncovered.
and how robots are being used to help bring better health care to the region. So come see us. A huge part of overall health in any community is mental health. But a state report says there is a growing need for more mental health resources in our region. The study cites the current psychiatric hospital bed capacity in East Tennessee is below research-based standard minimums for the region's population. News 5's Kylie Hill spoke with the president and CEO of Frontier Health and learns how they work to fight this shortage. During the 2022-2023 fiscal year, Frontier Health served more than 69,000 people in the community. And over the last 10 years span, we've probably seen an increase in, in people we've been able to touch grow probably by about 30%. Frontier Health focuses on providing trauma-focused quality services, opening a 988 call center, outpatient therapy, group homes, and school-based services. We're growing and evolving around knowing and understanding understanding what those needs are in our community. So we're always adapting our services to try and help meet those needs. But what are the needs in our community? Over the last probably three years, we've seen school-based services grow from a need perspective. After COVID, there's been a lot of different changes and challenges that I think our kiddos have experienced. And so we really tried to step things up to try and improve that and meet those needs. According to the Tennessee Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services, the number of Tennesseans living with severe mental illness, or SMI, is increasing. In 2018, there were around 374,000 Tennessee adults with SMI, and more than 386,000 in 2021, roughly a 3.3% increase. Having 69,000 people come out and be touched by services, I think speaks volumes to what the need is in our community and how we've seen that grow. If we weren't here, who would take that on? According to an annual survey conducted by the American Psychological Association, some psychologists say they can't meet the growing demand for mental health care, saying it comes from a workforce shortage. But Frontier Health works to bridge that gap. At the end of the day, our mission is what drives us and just being able to you know, roll up our sleeves, get creative, and do what we need to do to meet the need. And I think that's a driving force here at Frontier. Reporting in Northeast Tennessee, Kylie Hill, News 5, WCYB. There is also a great need for substance abuse treatment in our region. When addiction cases continue to rise, Ballad transformed the top floor of the Greenville Community Hospital to a treatment facility. The program is funded through a state contract grant. It allows families, particularly mothers and children, to stay together. As you look at the, the um, community impact, that's huge as well as far as, you know, families who are reunified, people who are back in the workforce, uh, jail diversion days, things like that. That really helped the community as a whole. The program launched back in 2021 and works closely with community partners such as ETSU and Frontier Health. We want to be able to help, help them prevent having to suffer without a smile. With the growing need for dental care for the underinsured, we're going to introduce you to a group working to fill the gap. Best Johnson City Toyota. Doctors say dental health is an important part of our physical health, but sometimes finding affordable dental care can be a challenge. News 5's Johnny Nordello joins us now with more on one group looking to fill the gap. According to Virginia Medicaid, nearly half of adults in Virginia suffer from tooth decay or gum disease. This is especially a problem for those who are uninsured or low income. Appalachian Highlands Dental Center is trying to combat this issue one patient at a time. Located in Abingdon, Virginia, Appalachian Highlands Dental Clinic has served more than 19,000 patients since opening their doors in 2020. Folks in this area shouldn't just be able to go to the dentist one time a year. They needed a place to go every day of the week, not to the ER for pain. 
According to Executive Director Elaine Miller, the clinic serves people in 14 counties, making it the largest Medicaid dental provider in Southwest Virginia. We want them to be able to have a facility to go to that this is their dental facility. The services they offer are extensive. We provide cleanings, um, sealants, fillings, oral health care screenings, um, crowns, bridges, implants, dentures. Uh, we provide any service that you can think of. Their mission is to provide dental care to the underserved and uninsured in our community. Smith tells me they get referrals from organizations that offer help themselves but can't quite do it all. We are the safety net for the safety net clinics. We get referrals from um, social organizations, from churches, from the ER. However, this wouldn't be possible without community support and partnerships with health organizations like Johnson Memorial Hospital. They've sponsored 22 residents so far. Uh, out of those 22 residents that have finished this program, six of them have stayed local. Some of them are even part-time faculty now. Smith says they offer affordable payment options for patients. If they don't have Medicaid, they show us proof of income and they're put on a sliding fee schedule. And our, our highest fee schedule is going to be lower than most private practices. Clinic leaders emphasize that they want to keep people happy and healthy. We want to be able to help, help them prevent having to suffer without a smile. In Abingdon, Johnny Nordello, News 5, WCYB. One of the ways Ballot is hoping to help push health care forward in our area is through the use of Da Vinci XI robotics across its health care network. The program started at Holston Valley, Franklin Woods, and the Bristol Regional Medical Centers. The tools help surgeons be more precise when it comes to the procedures they're performing. Doctors say in some cases, robotic surgery can even be less painful for a patient and return them back to their daily routines even faster.